Hello everyone, Brandy Bongos here and I've got a little thought that we are going to be seeing a new Doctor in the New Year's special and that the BBC have kept this under wraps. So if you don't like Jodie Whittaker, this still isn't the video for you. She's sticking around, she's making season 13 and if you just clicked on this because you don't like Jodie Whittaker, not sorry. So, spoiler warning, obviously now in effect, and also give me a thumbs up, give me a subscribe if you would like to see more from this channel. Now into the nitty gritty. What do I mean that we're going to see a new Doctor if Jodie Whittaker is sticking around? And she has been spotted filming series 13, so we know that is actually happening. What that means is... I think we're going to see another unknown Doctor in this episode. And I don't mean Jo Martin, she may well turn up and I would love if she did, but no, I'm thinking this is a whole new version of the Doctor that we're going to see in this episode. Now I did give you a spoiler warning, in this episode Graham and Ryan will also be departing. And there's been lots of people online saying that they think Graham's cancer is going to return or Ryan is going to be shot by a Dalek. I honestly don't think that Chris Chibnall will kill off either of these characters. From a point of view of that's just not the tone of the show in this era, I believe. And also, with Series 13, we have seen Mandit Gill out on location, as Yaz still filming, and I think if Graham or Ryan did die in the course of an adventure with the Doctor, Yaz would not continue to travel with her. So I don't think that is going to happen. So are you ready for my theory? My theory is that Graham is an unknown Doctor. Now, don't go away. Here is what I think has happened. So, at some point, roughly, say, about five years ago, in relative time in the show, the Graham Doctor has used the Chameleon Arch to make himself appear human. Now, something about that process means, as a human, he either really did get cancer, or his body didn't do too well with the transformation, and that is how he met Grace. Now, something Chris Chibnall has sort of been embracing with these timeless Doctors is this congruence between their experiences. So we have the timeless child and her experiences being masked with the Brendan police persona. So this kind of congruence could extend to the Doctor falling in love with a woman named Grace. And we've seen something similar happen with the Paul McGann Doctor in the 1996 telly movie, where the companion, with whom he has a slight romantic connection, is also called Grace. Now we've seen the Doctor use the Chameleon Arch twice to assume human form, once for David Tennant and once for Joe Martin, and in both cases, they fall in love with a human. So why wouldn't that happen here too? Chris Chibnall could be saying that that is part of the Doctor's human side. Even with the half-human Doctor 10.5, he is a lot more able to admit his love for Rose than the real Doctor. Now, I'm not just basing this theory on the fact that the Doctor falls in love with a woman called Grace. Although, I do think with Chris Chibnall's writing that he doesn't do anything by accident. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is entirely up to your interpretation <laughs> of, uh, of Chris Chibnall's writing. But there are a few other signs I think we've had along the way. The first thing that got me thinking about this is a strange little moment in Ascension of the Cybermen when Graham and Rovio, Rovio, Ravio, Angry Birds, are exploring the hold of the cyber ship. And at that point there, when they're having that discussion about whether Graham is strange or not, I get the impression that he's about to say, I'm the Doctor. You are really strange. Excuse me, I'm the, th I'm the most normal bloke you're ever going to meet. I'm the, th I'm the, th I'm the th This seems like a scene they could have shot again if that is just Bradley Walsh stumbling over his lines. So that is a directorial choice, but there's no obvious payoff for it within the episode. And it doesn't seem to be that Graham is lost for words. He's quite sharp through the rest of the conversation. So I wonder if that's the Doctor's little personality leaking out a bit there. There's also Graham's West Ham badge. Now... It is a badge for West Ham Football Club, which Graham is obviously a fan of. He's also got the scarf in The Woman Who Fell to Earth. But the badge itself, Bradley Walsh has said, 
It was a custom design, something he designed himself. Now if we zoom, enhance, zoom, enhance, zoom, enhance, we can see here that it says West Ham of Durham. It says W-H-O, who? Graham, throughout his tenure, has been wearing this badge with who written on it. And I think that could be what is housing the Doctor's consciousness. It is his fob watch. It is the lighthouse. It's where the Doctor is, inside this little badge. Now, how does this factor into this being Graham and Ryan's last story? Well, as I said, there's a sort of congruence to these timeless Doctors. They're going through some of the same actions as the Doctors we all know. On top of this, at the end of The Timeless Children, there is a TARDIS in the shape of a house sitting in the middle of Sheffield. And we know it's in the special because we see Yaz inside of it doing her whole Charlie Day conspiracy wall. So what if, having had his memories of being the Doctor awakened, the Doctor, as played by Bradley Walsh, sets off to explore the universe with his grandchild. Just like William Hartnell's Doctor and Carol Ann Ford as Susan, you then have Bradley Walsh as the Doctor exploring the universe with his grandson, Tosin Cole, as Ryan. It'd be a lovely departure for Graham and Ryan. It would allow them to come back for the anniversary special. It doesn't involve killing them off, and it pays homage to the strong relationship they've built over the course of the last two series. But I would like to know what you think. As I said before, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm also preparing a series of videos for viewers new to the classic series, focusing on the various story arcs throughout the classic series, because those of us who know the old show well think, oh, there's not so many story arcs, but it turns out there's actually quite a few. If you're new to the show, these videos will give you an idea of sets of stories you can watch that have overarching plots over several stories, so do come back for that. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and tune in for Revolution of the Daleks, New Year's Day in the UK, and the 2nd of January in Australia, America, and Canada. Thank you very much for watching.